In this tutorial video, we'll be examining reducing balance loans. In reducing balance loan, the loan is provided, money is forwarded to a person from a bank or an institution, the bank charges interest upon this amount periodically, and the borrower pays an amount back, or what we call an annuity periodically, for example monthly payments. This is done until the loan plus interest is paid in full. So we've got a few examples to look at. Example 1A. Peter wants to borrow $8,000 for a second-hand car and his bank offers him a personal loan for that amount at an interest rate of 13% per annum, interest debited fortnightly, with fortnightly repayments of $124.11 over three years. After two years, he wants to calculate how much he still owes by using the annuities formula. Which of the following equations should he use? Okay, let's have a look at this. Let's see if we can extract some information first of all. So P, the principal, or the amount borrowed, is $8,000. Q, the payment, uh, fortnightly payment, is $124.11. R, the compounding or growth factor, can be calculated by looking at the 13% the per annum, rather, and dividing that fortnightly. So 13 divided by 26 fortnights in a year makes up a 0.5% per fortnight. So the growth factor is 1 plus 0.5 over 100, or 1.005. The N, the number of payments after two years, would be two lots of 26 fortnightly payments, which comes out to 52. The equation is quite large, um, but I've color-coded it here so we can follow the installments of transferring the data across. So first of all, you can see that our 8,000 is where our principal lies, our growth rate, is 1.005 in this position, in this position, and in this position in the formula. Our fortnightly payments, our repayments, are $124.11. And our N, the number of payments, is 52, raised to the power of 52 in both cases. So there's our correct annuities formula. Now when we compare these to the five options provided, only one of them matches, and that is option C. It's clear that other options such as A uses the wrong number of terms. We look at option B, we have the wrong growth factor. Option D has again the wrong growth factor and the wrong number of terms. And option E has the wrong growth factor again. Example 1B uses the same information, except at this point the actual amount that Peter still owes after two years is closest to. We need to calculate the amount that Peter still owes after two years. To do this, I'd be using the CAS calculator. Again, the menu, finance, and finance solver is the best option. Okay. So, in this particular example, we have 52 as our number of payments because there's two years by 26 fortnightly payments, comes out to 52. 13% per annum, remembering that the finance solver uses percentage per annum. The present value was $8,000. That was the amount of money loaned. And you can see that it's positive because the money or the cash flow is going from the institution to the borrower. Now in this case our regular payment is $124.11 and it's put in as a negative because cash flow is going from the borrower to the bank. Future value is what we're trying to calculate and our payment per year in this case is 26 because it's fortnightly, 26 rather, and when you press the tab that updates the compounding payments per year as well. We hit enter and we find that after two years, that is 52 fortnights, there is still a balance outstanding of $3,019.17. So here's the calculation using the annuities formula, exactly the same answer. And so our nearest option, the closest to, will be option B of $3,000. Second example, example 2A, Gwendolyn has borrowed 14000 for renovations to her house. The terms of this loan are monthly instalments of $297.46 over five years with interest debited monthly at 10% per annum on the outstanding balance. The amount still showing after three years is given by, again, 
we have a range of possible annuities formula equations. Let's, as last time, extract our data. So the principal is $14,000 that's being loaned. The payments are monthly of $297.46. Now our growth factor, if we have a look at this, is a little more complex. It's 10% per annum, but we're looking at monthly instalments. So 10 divided by 12 would give us our, um, our decimal in terms of our monthly um, rate. However, if we put in 10 divided by not 12, but 1200, that will make our conversion correct for our growth rate. Remembering, of course, that the monthly interest rate would then be divided by 100. So 10 divided by 1200 gives us the correct value to be added to 1 for the growth factor. It comes out to 1.0083 recurring. Uh, this is three years, and so 12 monthly payments over three years gives us a terms of 36 payments. Again, we substitute our values in, and from there we can calculate the correct formula. And we can see that option A fits this perfectly. Option B, as can be clearly seen, has the wrong number of payments. Option C has the wrong growth rate. Option D has an incorrect growth rate written on the uh, fraction, the right-hand side of the annuities formula, and option E also has an incorrect growth rate written on the left-hand side of the annuities formula. Final part is to work out the actual amount that Gwendolyn still owes after three years. Again, we have an equation comes out here if we use an annuities formula of $6,445.98. However, beware this is using a growth rate of 1.008333 when in fact it is a 3 reoccurring. So that will make a slight impact as we'll see when we do this calculation using our financial solver. So if we go back to our financial solver and clear the information that we've got. Okay, in this example we've got three years at 12 months, so there's 36 payments being made. The interest rate is per annum again, is 10% per annum. The present value of the amount borrowed was not 14000 and that's positive because it's money, or cash flow rather, that's flowing from the institution to the borrower. Regular payments of $297.46, and again that's entered in as a negative because it's a cash flow that's going into the institutional bank from the borrower. The future value is what we're interested in. Now the payments per year, in this case they're fortnightly so there's 26. We tab that the compounding periods per year is also 26. We hit our return on our future value and we see that we have an amount outstanding of $4,613 and Oh, wait a minute, must be some mistake. 36, 10%, 14,000, minus 297. Hmm, let me check. If we go back, we are looking at monthly instalments. Bad mistake. We go back to our CAS calculator and redeem this from 26 to 12 for the number of months do a recalculation of our future values and it comes out to a much more accurate answer of $6,446.13. You notice that's slightly different with the value here that we have from our annuities formula and that's from the rounding errors occurred, error occurred rather when we have a reoccurring digit. And so the solution that's closest will be in fact $6,500.